Let me show you how Enterprise Architect can assist you with performing threat modeling. In this demonstration I will show you how to create your first trust diagram. Then I will make you aware of some diagram validation rules of thumb and some tips on diagram iterations. Threat identification using Stride, how to mitigate them, tracing them to other models and the last topic will cover the ways how you can communicate a threat model to all stakeholders. Now let's have a look and see how we can create such a trust diagram. So I will navigate to the correct package and open a dialog for creation of a new diagram. Here you can filter out the correct diagram groups, select trust diagram and by confirmation you will open a new In the toolbox you see all the relevant elements for creation of such a diagram. So now I'm just putting all these three. As you can see, every element when I place it onto a diagram has its own subtype. So I just place the process. If you accidentally didn't assign a subtype, you can do it later as you see over here. And now the last element boundary. This is a special kind of boundary, so-called trust boundary, which can either represent a corporate network, internet, machine, sandbox, user, kernel mode, and so on. Using a quick linker is a great way how to create a data flows between, between two elements. By adding name, we will assign the information being conveyed by the data flow. And let's do that on the other side as well and we will put there you see that EA makes threat modeling easier for all developers through a standard notation for visualizing system components data flows and security boundaries uh, let me align the diagram a bit and that will be it alright so the second part of diagramming covers the diagram validation rules. I prepared, I prepared a set of rules and uh, let's have a look at the first one. What we see here is one process sending and reading some data from SQL database. Uh, do you think that does the data magically appear? Of course not. Data comes from external entities. So we gotta create a customer. Customer who is sending some orders through the web server and then it's later stored in a SQL database. And of course the web server usually provides some information. In this case it's a confirmation towards the customer. Let's have a look at the second one. So what you see here, web server and some some data store. Um, we just created black hole. Of course, we are missing someone to use it, the data from from the database in this case. So we gotta create uh, yet another process and create a data flow. So please avoid black holes. All right, let's have a look. Rule number three. All right, in this case we just created the magic. Why magic? Well, the data apparently doesn't flow magically between the two databases. Well, it goes through a process again, so a process is missing between the databases. So I just created uh, RMA process taking care of the, uh, the data exchange between the two data stores. Okay, so let me just adjust it and one more data flow you see the quick linker is a big help and one more okay and now let's have a look at the rule number four uh, what are we missing here so yeah, so let me walk you through the process. So we have two processes and mm -hmm, we are missing trust boundaries. 
trust boundaries, so at trust boundaries that intersect data flows or point surfaces where an attacker can interject. Functional or sorry, machine boundaries, uh, privilege boundaries, integrity boundaries, boundaries are examples of trust boundaries. Threats in a native process are often inside a trust boundary because they share the same rights, identifiers and access. Processes talking across a network always have a trust boundary. So we are missing two trust boundaries, administrator and domain admin. Let's come back to the overview. I do some grooming by closing all the diagrams which I'm not going to use anymore. And all right. So now diagram iteration. When it comes to the diagram iteration, well, start with an overview which has a few external interactors, one or two processes, one or two data stores, and data flows to connect them. Check your work and make sure that it matches the reality. Update diagrams as product changes and make sure that your diagrams not resemble flowcharts, class diagrams, or core graphs. I highly recommend to create diagram layers depicting different levels of abstractions. So start with the context diagram, which is a very high level, which depicts the entire component or product or your system. Then the level one diagram is high level, focusing on single feature or scenario. Other levels are created if needed. Great, so let us assume that we created our diagrams and now let's focus on the second step of threat modeling which is consists of identifying the potential threats using stride. How can Enterprise Architect help us doing this step? The best way how to start a process of identifying threats is to slice and dice our level one diagram into some other diagrams representing uh, scenarios. So I'm going to create a new diagram and uh, I'm going to give it a name admin instructions the admin console. All right. Confirm it. And by selecting those elements which are involved in a scenario and copying them onto the newly created diagram, I will nicely create a new diagram reflecting the scenario using just those elements which uh, now I'm interested in. Each element in a diagram is susceptible to one or more threat types. In order to create a threat, you will use the threat from the toolbox and by dragging and dropping onto a diagram, we will create a uh, first thread which represents spoofing the admin. All right. And uh, as a text, so admin user may be spoofed by an attacker and this may lead to unauthorized access to admin console. All right. And now let's make the text visible uh, directly on a diagram by setting the uh, nodes make visible in a compartment of the element. And and as a next step, obviously, we gotta create a link between the threat and the um, and the data flow together with those elements. To connect the elements uh, with the threat is not important, but then you can better leverage the features such as insert-related elements, and you can see it better in the traceability window. Okay. Threat mitigation. So once you correctly identified and categorized threat, then you gotta figure out how to mitigate such a threat. 
And as you can see, EA can greatly help you because there are already pretty fine mitigation checklists, which you can easily assign to the identified threat. The next step after you assign the mitigation strategy to the concrete uh, concrete threat, then you need to indicate that uh, you started the mitigation state and you selected a checklist. So let's do some some checks. Let's do some some rounds. Uh, what is the appropriate countermeasure to uh, to mitigate that concrete threat? Okay, so I just identified its appropriate authentication and don't store secrets. And mitigation strategy is according to the checklist. All right, and of course you can set the threat priority to too high. The best thing about the Predefined Mitigation Checklist is that you can modify the content of the checklist accordingly. Uh, then I wanted to show you the traceability window that it reflects the reality that you see what is threatened by which element and you see very nicely the traceability with, resp with respect to the, to the threats identified. All right, tracing to other models. In reality, the threat modeling can um, be a, a consequence work after you already created some diagrams. So let me show you how easily you can create a relationship to the previously created diagrams. So I will navigate to the right diagram. So let us assume that we have this context diagram and uh, previously we created diagram. So I will go to the other, other models and this system context uh, trust diagram reflects the reality of our use case diagram. In order to create a traceability between those elements you just uh, use, I, I used in this case uh, generalization to reflect that those elements are uh, those elements used for trust diagram are specialization of the use case diagram elements okay well how to communicate your threat model well I prepared already uh, some templates using the virtual virtual document uh, concept and uh, I'm going to generate a threat model report using the virtual document structure. So it will it will take some time. And uh, how to use this virtual document? Uh, so there are other webinars available in the webinar library. So go and check them out. All right. So it's done. And let's see how the document looks like. So the content, this is the first way how to distribute your threat model uh, using the, uh, the text generation. As you see, you clearly see even the tra traceability uh, of the elements, meaning that threats, what the concrete threat threatens, you see the tagged values, uh, what type of the threat it is, in this case repudiation, and it threats all those three elements. All right, let's come back to Enterprise Architect and uh, let's have a look at other options, how you can visualize your threat model using built-in capabilities of Enterprise Architect. Enterprise Architect can create a number of different charts. This dashboard I created clearly demonstrates how you can analyze your threat models by visual aggregation or relevance or how you can identify emerging trends with ease and respond quickly just like you see in a heat map so you see the threats overview according to the type priority state and mitigation strategy and finally Let's see how Prolaborate can help us visualize our threat models. Prolaborate leverages the model data in Enterprise Architect to allow the wider user community to analyze, interact and make key decisions. 
You can fully control visibility of your threat models by selecting packages from EA model to define sections that are shared to your end users. Prolaborate also lets you determine what is accessible to a specific user or a user group. With Prolaborate you can design intuitive dynamic dashboards using Dashboard Designer. One of the best features is the ability to create dynamic level graphs and charts based on EA model metadata and tagged values. This is the true powerful model-driven reporting delivering real-time reports to business users. The data you are looking at is representing our castle threat model. In these two views, you see different visualizations of the processes that depend on the external entities and the threats to the processes used by them. With these powerful visualizations, you can present any levels of your threat models in a single page. Interactive charts let you dig into the EA data. Well, that's about it for this part. We've covered diagramming, threat identification, threat mitigation, tracing other models, and threat model communication.